Pavono PS305 DC power supply. Is it worth it? Let's find out. <music> Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and this is a Pavono PS305 DC bench power supply. Now the folks over at Pavono, they asked me would I be willing to do a review of their product, so they sent me one of these. This is a demonstration unit that they sent me, so um, you know, so far out of the box, it looks pretty decent, a uh, pretty decent build quality. It's got these nice uh, seven segment displays on the front. You know, of course they're, they're LED lit. So it's got a nice look to it. You got your, uh, your voltage and current adjustments here, of course, and of course fine on this side. Uh, and then we've got uh, your uh, positive, negative, and a chassis ground. So let's take her apart and then let's do a nice uh, bench test and let's see what we get. So first things first, we have our ceremonial unboxing here. The first thing we see is uh, a pair of leads here, the banana clips and the alligator clips. And we've got our power cord, an instruction manual, but who's really going to read that? And then, of course, the main event here is our main unit, packed very nicely in some polystyrene, and wrapped up in some plastic. Right there. Okay, so we have our unit here. We have their nice and sturdy aluminum construction. So let's go ahead and take them her apart here. Hmm. The cover. Turn it off. So uh, we'll start here. In the back. We've got our. Uh, power supply input and it is fused. There is a fuse inside there uh, and a nice little switch between 110 to 20. It uses this internationally big beefy fan here on the back for our heat sink. Now we come in from the power supply back here. Uh, now the first thing I notice is that these uh, these terminals are not insulated. That to me poses a problem uh, just a safety issue. I mean, they're in there nicely, but uh, I just don't like seeing uninsulated terminals on AC input. So we got that, and then there is our chassis ground lead. Now this is a hard switch directly over here to the, um, the toggle switch on the front. Uh, again, not um, not insulated. You can see how closely together those uh, those two terminals come. So just any little bit of uh, force on there, a little wear on there, and those two are going to bridge and we're going to have a problem. I think what I'm going to do is uh, put a little heat shrink on there and just insulate these a little bit better. And maybe I'll do that in a, in a future video. Anyway, so we're coming back here. Uh, here is the AC side of our board. We'll rectify a couple of big beefy capacitors up here to our MOSFET transistors, uh, which are on these, uh, these nice big heat sinks here. So good, uh, looks like we have good heat uh, heat dissipation. And we got uh, a lot of, it's, a, it's a, actually a very clean board, uh, very nice. So it doesn't look like it's just slapdash put together. Uh, here we have the, the front board. You can see there we've got our, uh, our driver for our uh, LED displays. Uh, we have a couple of pot trimmers for the uh, accuracy there on the display. And let's see, there's our uh, terminals there. Looks good, everything looks pretty good there. It looks like this is uh, some sort of uh, noise reduction. Got a couple of noise filtering capacitors here. Uh, looks like there's actually a couple of spots for a couple of more capacitors. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the noise is on these, and maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll play with that another day. Uh, having a look at the back of the board here, uh, you can see where this is the AC section, and of course the rest is the DC section. Personally, I would like to see a little better separation here. That's. I mean, there's a good bit of you know, there's a good you know, almost a finger's worth of separation between the AC and DC sides. Uh, but me, just being the perfectionist I am, uh, I would rather see some physical separation, maybe a cutout, uh, just just to give you a nice air gap, a little bit more safety, a little bit more separation there. But uh, but this is not bad. This is actually uh, 
rather, rather good build quality. I'm highly impressed with the quality of this build. And uh, so, so far, so good. Looks like we're gonna have a pretty decent little product here. Now she looks pretty good on the inside. A couple of little things here and there, not anything that's a deal breaker and nothing I can't fix myself, which I'll probably do another video. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when that comes out. So now I guess what we really need to do is test her against the uh, specifications, but uh, I don't really have a proper bench testing setup right here, uh, but I do know a guy. So we're gonna pack this stuff up, we're gonna run down the street, and we're gonna give her a proper rundown. Okay, so I'm here with Arclight, 23B Hackerspace here in Fullerton, California. I asked him if I could uh, you know, use the, uh, the workbench here to, uh, to do a little more uh, accurate measurements of this thing, a little uh, literal bench test, if you will. Uh, so Arclight, show me what you got here. Yeah, so this is our um, double E electronics bench here. Uh, we have a bench top DMM here that goes to four digits. It's called the Mastec uh, 8040. We have a Rigel uh, DS 1102 100 megahertz scope, uh, one giga sample. Uh, should be pretty adequate for testing, you know, power supplies, things like that. And then of course we have the, the little... Absolutely, and we have our <laughs> device under test. Fantastic. Yep. So. so we want to measure some current, uh, we want to see what kind of ripple we're getting, uh, any of that stuff, uh, voltage, accuracy, no problem. All right, fantastic. So, all right, let's get down to business. Let's do it. The frequency to which you are tuned at the present time is the one on which you will normally receive civil defense information in the event of a national emergency. Okay, so Arclight has very graciously allowed me to use the electronic shop here at 23B to, to check this thing out on the oscilloscope. So let's hook it up and, and, and find out what's going on here. So we're going to look up our leads here. Of course, white to black. And the red. Okay, we got our scope all set up and we got the power supply here. It's uh, it's preset already to 12 volts, so let's see what it's got. You see here, a little bit of a ripple going on uh, with the switching power supply, a little bit of noise in the line there. Okay, so now let's try this under load. I've got it hooked up with a, a 10 watt uh, 10 watt resistor here, 24 ohm. So let's see uh, see what we do with the 12 volts here. We're running about 12 volts, a half an amp here, and uh, see it's still got quite a bit of noise in there, even under load. One other thing we really need to look at is the voltage spike when it comes on. It seems to be kind of, uh, seems to be a bit of a spike when you turn it first on, and uh, that can be a problem with uh, sensitive electronics, things like that. So let's take a look here and uh, and see if there's any any real bad spike when it happens. Look at there, we've got a nice little spike, a 20 volt spike right there, before it levels back off. So this could be a problem if you have sensitive electronics or anything like that. So just something to be wary of. So don't have your load connected uh, before you turn it on. Turn it on and then connect your load. So while I'm here at the shop, I might as well check the uh, accuracy with a, a, a much more accurate multimeter than what I've got at home. This is a Mastec MS8040 uh, true RMS multimeter. Uh, so it's accurate to like uh, four decimal places, something like that. So uh, we're gonna check it out with this. And uh, so let's just go ahead and turn her on. Um, take her back down to, uh, let's take it down to, start it out about 12 volts. Okay, so we got 12 volts there and we'll just Check our voltage here. Twelve volts, twelve point zero, and twelve point zero five zero four nine. So fairly accurate. Not too terribly bad. Okay, let's take her up to the top end here. Uh, about to about 24 volts, that's fairly common. 24 volt. 
24.04 volts. Excellent. So still fairly accurate here. Take her all the way up to the top, to the tippy tippy top. Fans kicking in a little bit. 31.9 volts on the screen there. Uh, 31.96, so even still accurate up at the top extreme. Now let's take her down to the take her down to the low end. Uh, let's do about 3.3 volts. Actually, let's get 5 volts in. Let's make sure our 5 volts good. Uh, working on electronics, I'm usually working with uh, 5 and 3.3 volt, uh, you know, logic and so forth. Um, so 5029, 503, uh, right there on the 5.0 display. Let's take it down to 3.3. 3.3. .3. Three point three one seven on the RMS, and then let's just take it all the way down to zero. Because the cool thing about this is that it actually does it will read zero four three zero. There we go. And it's rolling down. Yeah, it's it's right at you know right around zero. Uh, so a little little linear resistance. There we go. But yeah, so we're right down at zero now. Uh, so fairly accurate across the entire spectrum, uh, which is something you generally don't see out of these these cheapo uh, Chinese power supplies. Now I got my 10 watt resistor here. Let's let's put her under load, uh, and let's see how accurate. Uh, we are when we're under load. Okay, so now we're set up so that we can check the amperage accuracy. So I got the whole thing. We got it running out of red and into a 10 watt resistor over here into the multimeter and then back out and back into a uh, negative side. So let's uh, let's just take a look here. We'll uh, start running it up. Run up our voltage a little bit. Okay, so let's go to 3.3 volts. 3.3 uh, volts and showing 1.4 amps right here and uh, 1.3 uh, 0.139 right there okay I'll take it up to 5 uh, 0.21 uh, 0.208 so still really super close um, fans kicking in take it up to 12 volts 12 volts, uh, showing 0.51 here, uh, 0.497 here. Uh, we'll check the accuracy. We'll check and make sure that's within spec. I don't want to do the math in my head. And then let's just take her right on up to 24. <laughs> 24 volts, one amp. 0.994 amps. So all in all, through the whole range, it looks fairly accurate. Um, looked pretty darn accurate here. So I'm going to say that's a, that's a win there. Back down. Back down. So all in all, not a bad little product, especially for the price point. I'll stick a link down in doobly do so you can uh, check it out on Amazon yourself. But uh, I definitely would recommend this for like hobbyists or, or guys like me, just home gamers, uh, just you know, playing around with some electronics. If you need just a good, decent uh, DC power supply, bench power supply, just to mess around with. Uh, you don't need anything with too terribly much precision. Um, this is definitely uh, this is definitely made for for people like me. And, uh, so if this review helps you out, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, more stuff like this coming. Uh, definitely going to play around on the interior. Going to work with this thing a little bit, and uh, and we might actually have a uh, we might actually have a new series coming up with uh, with ArcLight and the guys over at 23B. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoy hacking and and messing around and, and playing around in the workshop, we're going to be uh, we're going to be having a good time. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. My name is Atari. I will see you guys next time, and until then, tally ho, y'all.